While SQA is sometimes rather negatively seen as the process police, more effective SQA works more like a coaching system. Think of it this way. SQA defines the process with inputs from the stakeholders. They're the keepers of the process diagram, but the process is not theirs to do with as they wish, but rather a joint effort with all the stakeholders to define the right process for the company, and SQA is merely the keeper of the diagram. In support of this, SQA, again with input from stakeholders, creates and maintains templates and work aids to make it easier and less time-consuming to execute the defined process. SQA then conducts training, initial training for new team members, but also remedial coaching guidance or whatever based on process failures. The emphasis here is in making sure everyone has the ability to execute and understand the defined process. SQA also keeps records and metrics to ensure the process is on track. The point of metrics is not just to keep score for the purpose of keeping score, but rather to provide tools and insight that allows the team to determine if there's a systematic weakness in their process or their execution of the process so they can fix it and produce better software. It's essential to look at process failures as a coaching opportunity rather than something that needs to be fixed by blaming someone or punishing them. Everyone makes mistakes, and the point of SQA is to find something that went wrong and figure out the least intrusive, best way to fix it to get the team back on track. Perhaps the worst thing you can do as part of SQA is to keep metrics and use those metrics to punish people. Not only will you have bad team morale, but those metrics will become instantly useless as everyone games the numbers to protect their teammates.